about the earth. We think about solid, unyielding, unyielding hard material. We think about it from our human scales of space and of time. But occasionally, an opportunity comes along that allows us to change our perception of the Earth and see it in a different time frame or space frame that allows us to see the wild dynamics of the way the actual Earth works. This is a classic video. It's shown to probably every single first-year engineering student in for several generations. My, my dad said that his professors saw it when they were engineering students. Um, and it, it's to motivate the study of the differential equations that, that govern the behavior of, uh, of our materials. So let's start with the rocks. Let's start with the rocks of the Earth and look at them and think about them. So at the very center of the Earth, is a solid iron core, basically the same exact type of iron that you'll cook with, with your stainless, um, with, your, uh, with your cast iron pot. As we go up, we can reach down into the mantle. If we were able to reach down into the mantle, which is most of the earth, we would pull out a rock that looks like this crystalline green beauty, a peridotite. We see this as just a hard green material. And then further up towards the surface of the crust, we can go to Yosemite and we can climb on the granite and explore that yielding earth. So what I'd like to do now is zoom in to what those rocks look like. And so this is the picture now, zoomed in 10 orders of magnitude in space, and then slowed down 12 orders of magnitude in time so that we can see the atoms and the molecules that make up our rocks are actually vibrating. And, um, and this dynamicism is what lends the rocks their physical properties. We could zoom in even more and look at, this is actually a, some iron, a piece of iron at an incredibly microscopic scale, and we can see that all of the atoms, the iron atoms, are vibrating, and actually they're waves, like my arm slinkies, at that micro scale. So what we study in our laboratory is exactly the properties of these materials, the dynamic properties of these materials. And we stay up all night so that we can study their dynamic properties so that we can learn some things about the Earth and how it behaves on that dynamic scale. Halfway between here in Los Angeles and where we do those experiments in Berkeley, California, along the San Andreas Fault, that's the major geologic feature of California, there's an earthquake laboratory and it turns out that at the same time that we're doing our experiments looking at vibrating materials and how they behave dynamically, the Earth is doing its own experiments on itself. So we know from living in California that actually the Earth's not a static place at all. That occasionally, if you look very closely, you can see or feel the Earth shaking beneath our feet. And so this is a picture from Parkfield, California, a USGS-run earthquake laboratory that measures these earthquakes when they happen, measures everything about them. When the earthquake is strong and powerful enough, it can send waves all throughout the Earth, and they're detected at different sites on the surface of the Earth. In fact, if the earthquake is powerful enough and strong enough, it can ring the Earth like a bell. So just like the sounds that the musical instruments are playing when we're hearing the music beforehand, um, if we slow that vibration down, we're actually seeing the earth ring like a bell. And that ringing like a bell tells us something. The tone, the music that seismologists, earth scientists listen to, tell us about what's happening on the inside of a planet. So just like a sonogram can give us a picture of the bun in the oven, the earth music, when a large earthquake rings, gives us a picture of the interior structure of the planet. When we put together what we learn in the laboratory about the dynamic behavior of materials and what we can measure on the earth about its dynamic interior, we can put together models of now what is actually on a very um, uh, slow time scale a picture of a convecting, moving planetary interior. So this is a computer convection model. So we get three-dimensional flow, just like a pot of split pea soup on your stovetop being heated from below, 
and then mixing all around. We can also do experiments on conviction, convection in the laboratory. So now this is back to our human scale of space. This is a tabletop experiment and time. We're actually watching molten wax being heated from below, freezing at the surface and spreading out along the sides. And you can see the lineations, this line that it creates as material comes up and is spread out. It turns out that what we see in the laboratory is exactly what the first map of the ocean floor showed us. So along the center lines of oceans, you see these giant mountains, the mid-ocean ridge. And what's happening there is material is bubbling up from the interior of the Earth, freezing and spreading out, exactly like what you saw in the wax model, but now orders of magnitude larger scale. There are other really neat things that are happening in the ocean here. That is, if we were to look around at the sides of all the plates, we would see that there's a concentration of earthquakes right on the edges of all of those plates. So there's active things happening. Those plates are moving with respect to each other. We can also look at volcanoes and find out that the volcanoes also occur where these plates on the surface are moving down very slow time scales deep within the Earth, bringing the ocean along with it, heating up and creating giant explosive volcanoes all around our Pacific Ring of Fire. What's happening is as, as material is being pushed down here, or as it's coming up from the center, it's actually being pushed down in these giant plates on that side. And as that happens, it's pulling the earth with it along the way. So what you can see is a giant three-dimensional convection cell. So it's a fancy soup with a solid surface of scum on the top sorry to say, crustal geologist. Um, but let's, let's take a look at that, what's happening on the two-dimensional surface. So if we look now at a map going way back into Earth history, so this is a billion years ago out of our four billion year history, we can see the two-dimensional plate motion. As we watch it coming into the present, you can watch the whole Earth change shapes with time as it's now moving across the surface to our current state. It's stopped now because that's where we are. But we're moving along at a rate of a human rate, a few centimeters, which we can understand, per year. And that's about the rate that Los Angeles is moving north along the San Andreas Fault towards San Francisco. So Earth isn't a static place at all, and nor is our understanding of the Earth static. Our understanding of the Earth several hundred years ago, well, it had some similarities in that the interior was very hot and uh, the elements and winds blew on the outside. So the Earth of the past has changed our understanding. We understand the Earth as the present. And here's what a brand new picture from the NASA space station showing us our new big blue marble from 2012. And of course, the Earth of the future is going to be our understanding and how it changes of the Earth of the future. And of course, that's our scientists of the future. Thank you.